I, I know. I, I know. Deep down, Captain America is in this body. He's in there. I know you're thinking, but yeah, on the outside, you got the new Thor going on, though. See, is the problem, right? <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's coming. Why? Because I'm, I'm a runner. I'm a runner. I've been called to run. And this is what we call a visual aid. All right? That's it. Do you, do you get it? You get most of it. <laughs> you get the majority of it right now. But I'm going to bring some to you as we progress through this thing. But who knows what series we're in? Run. That's exactly right. And today, the message title for today, if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, is called Winning. Winning. And not like the Charlie Sheen kind of winning either. Just that's right out. But winning, winning, winning. Do you have your Bibles? May I see them? We hold them up here. Digital is acceptable. <laughs> and we make a declaration as we posture ourselves to hear from the Word of God. And so if we can put that on the screen, this is what we're going to say together. It's a declaration that says, God, you get to be God, and I'm, I'm going to take myself out of that seat today. Amen. You speak to me. Are you ready? Let's say this together. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. Amen. Don, you were so eager to take notes. That Bible went right down. I love it. Take those notes. We had heard from Pastor Monica last week about us being ambassadors. Do you remember this? And do you realize that you are an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ? Someone that goes in his stead. In fact, this is so good. Accredited diplomat. Now, but I can't even go on from there. Accredited, indicating demonstrated competency, credibility, and authority. Somebody say authority. authority. You got it. This is an accredited diplomat set by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. Now, who knows that we are living in a foreign land. We are not of this world even. We're foreigners all over this. Wherever you go, you're a foreigner because your home is in heaven. Your residence is in heaven. That's right. We're just traveling, just passing through. But God kept us here for a reason. He kept us here for a reason after we got saved. But you are an ambassador. That's true. You've been called into this dark world, right? Darkness covers the earth. And deep darkness covers the people. You have been sent as light. You're an ambassador. Someone say, I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador. We've been kept here to win as we thrust this light into this dark world. We have been called to, to run to the darkness because darkness cannot stay where there is light. Who knows that's true? You flip on a light switch, it's not like the darkness had a choice. It's just obliterated by the light. It's like, where did the darkness go? No, but no one even asked that question. No one cares. They, why? They flipped on the switch. I want light. Who wants light? That's right. Say, I am light. That's right. Jesus had said, I'm the light of the world. And then later he said, you are the light of the world. Get it. Get it. If you get it in your heart, you'll get it out of your mouth. See, we're meant to run to win the most valuable prize ever. The most valuable prize ever. And that's people. People. That's the prize. Spoiler alert. That's, that's what winning looks like. See, this prize was so valuable to God that he says, you, you know what I'm willing to pay for it? My son. To win the people of the earth, I'm willing to pay the price, the cost of my son. And surely Jesus was paid in full. Amen? Someone say in full. All right, are you going to talk to me today, right? All right, good. Good. So we are emboldened once again to live sent, which is a word that the Lord has spoken very clearly over us at the rock. Isn't that right? We are meant to live sent, a sent life, like we have been ambassadors this whole time. <laughs> right? Some of you may just be cluing into it, but that's all right. The Lord is bringing us along right today so we can all be together 
and where there is unity, the Lord commands a certain something. What is that thing? Blessing. The Lord commands blessing in the Psalms. He says where there's unity. All right. Look in your Bibles at Exodus 4.1, would you? It's right near the beginning. Exodus 4. We're going to start in verse 1. And the Exodus is when the children of Israel were delivered from the Egyptian land where they were being uh, forced to work and labor as slaves. And they, they lived there for hundreds of years in this captivity. And then Moses came along, right? Oh, we all love Moses, right? Praise the Lord. All right. So in Exodus 4, we're going to start in verse 1. And we're not going to get very far before we go somewhere else, but we're going to come back to Exodus 4. So can you keep your finger there no matter what we do? At least I'll take that as a yes. All right. Then Moses answered and said, because God has sent him to speak to Pharaoh and say, Let my people go. Right? Okay. (laughs) Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. Oh, so right off the bat, the Lord says, go, deliver this message to Pharaoh. And Moses is like, wait, 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 wait. But what if? But what if? But what? All the contingencies and all the doubt and all the fear and all the everything, right? What if they don't receive me, right? Romans 9, 15 and 16 says, For God says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. You hear the heart of the Lord? Isn't he good? So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. See, mercy means not getting what you deserve. Like, you deserve that punishment. (laughs) I deserved that ticket the other day, and I was shown mercy by the policeman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me, personally, I'm just saying, we keep it real around here. I rolled right through that stop sign, and I had every intention of rolling through that stop sign. I knew why I was doing it. I was planning on doing it, and I executed it flawlessly. It was just the wrong thing. And he let me know, despite my very kindly neighborly wave. I, here I go, whoop, there he is. Hand out the window. <laughs> oh man let's get back to it see god shows mercy even though we don't deserve it who knows that we don't deserve god's mercy but he's rich in mercy isn't he he's got enough mercy to spare he's like i got you right when someone takes you out to lunch you're like i got enough to cover you too <laughs> praise the lord the lord says i'll be merciful to whomever i will be merciful to and i will have compassion on whomever i will have compassion on and that's us And not only us, but all the people that you, Moses, (laughs) are going to take. You can take this message too. Amen. If if Will and I are the only ones saying amen to this, that we're going to take the message out, we got problems. We're going to start this whole series again. And we're on message six today. So (laughs) we... (laughs) Can I get a heartier amen about us carrying the message? Amen. Amen. I'm serious about this talking back to me thing today. All right. And not just today. I just, that was not true. All the days. All right, every day. Exodus 4, now verse 2. Now that we're five minutes into this message after one verse, here we go. Then the Lord said to Moses, after he's like, bu, 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 bu. he said, what is that in your hand? That's the loose translation of what Moses said. What, God said, what is in your hand? Moses said, a staff. Then the Lord said, throw it on the ground. Anyone know that song? I threw it on the ground. No? Anyone know? (laughs) We've got a couple. All right. Praise the Lord. See, us young people, you see, know. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Don't point at him as if he's not young and doesn't qualify, doesn't classify. He's in there. All right. All right. So throw it on the ground. He said, get it out there and, and let people see how powerful this thing is. Let's see. Let's see God's power at work. Amen. Amen. What's in your hand? A staff. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a snake, and he ran from it. There's a picture I want to show that was in my message notes. I hope we got it so we can put it up there. There are two types of people in this world, 
and when you see this picture, you're going to know immediately what kind of person you are. Because there's only two. Do you see it there? There's this man that goes behind the alligator and is shooing him. Do you see this? Did you, do you know about it? He's shooing him off the thing. There are two types of people in this world. That guy and then all the rest of us, I think. I don't know, Raphael, you've been messing with some snakes, though. So, all right, here, this is the snake. This is contextual right here. He threw it on the ground, and it became a snake. I'm not even good this far, okay, if it's me, if I'm being honest, and I'm always honest. I'm not even good this far. It became a snake, and Moses ran from it. I can get behind that, all right? There is a godly fear in certain things that we should just, you know, Man and snake have not been friends since Genesis 2, okay? Like, it was right near the beginning that we had a falling out big time, all right? On your belly you will go. You know what I'm saying? You're going to eat the dust. All right. He ran from it. Verse 4, then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. If anyone knows anything about snakes and handling snakes... The last place you want to reach for him is from the tail. There's teeth in the other end, right? That that jungle book quote, right? You got the tiger by the tail. There's teeth in the other end. All right. Moses ran from it. That was a good instinct, right? But the Lord said, I'm doing something powerful here. He said, take it by the tail. (laughs) So these two types of people, now you know who you are. Moses reached and took hold of the snake and turned it back into a staff in his hand. Isn't that good news? Thank God, because if it stayed a snake, (laughs) I just don't even know. I don't even know. There would be screaming in that moment, I am sure, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. that, That God has spoken to you. That God has sent you. That God has ordained you an ambassador. That God has said to you, run. Amen. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. So wait, what did, what did he hold? He held the staff in something. What, what was he holding his staff with? His hand. Now he's supposed to put something in his bosom, in his, in his shirt, in his cloak. In his, what do they wear? In that thing, turban, the toga. What, what are they? <laughs> Furthermore, the Lord said, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. I, is there a snake in there? Lord? Like, what do you, I don't know. Anyway, he did it to his credit. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. So we've gone from now a snake, not good, to leprosy, also not good. Oh, and he said, put your hand in your bosom again. And he drew it out, and it was restored like his other flesh. Whew. Then it will be, if they do not believe you nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe even those two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. How's he going to pour this water out? With something. What's he going to use? His hand. He's going to dip something. He's going to take his hand, plunge something in the river, right? Pour it out. Using his hand. I'm setting you up here. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses now says to the Lord, in verse 10, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Now wait a doggone second. Weren't we just talking about all this hand, handy work? And now Moses switches gears, apparently, and starts talking about his speech and his eloquence in his mouth. What is this? What is this? Apparently, the Lord wants us to know that these go hand in hand. Or hand and mouth. Or hoof and mouth. I don't know. But, but you know what I'm saying? The hand and the mouth are linked. Okay? Thank you, Carrie, for being here. Because someone's got to get my jokes. Now look at verse 11. The Lord is addressing this. Because here's Moses again. But I, but, I, but, I, but, but, but. Verse 11. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? He's like, I got you, kid. Just do what I say. 
All right, verse 12. Now go. I will help you speak. I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. Proverbs 4.12 says, When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. See, Moses needs to be hearing these words. He needs to be hearing this assurance from the Lord, and he is. But who knows that some people can hear and also not hear. You ever tell your kid to go do something, and they know exactly what you said, and then it's still not done? This is this, okay? This is Moses right here. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. The Lord is saying, I'm going to bear you along. Don't worry. You walk freely. Walk on. Run. Okay. Exodus 4, 13 now. But Moses said. See, it's just like a heartbreak. Every time Moses opened his mouth right here, it's like, man... You are not getting the picture here. Oh, my Lord, please send by the hand of whoever else you may send. (laughs) Moses said, please send someone else. Can you believe this? Please. He's pleading with the Lord, send someone else. Different than Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Right? And he's even, he's shouting it. There's an exclamation point on it. Who will go for us? Here I am, Lord, send me. But not Moses. Uh, send somebody else. And it's like if the Lord comes to you and is chatting you up about something, he has made up his mind. Okay? <laughs> there is no, please send someone else. All right? And for us, in this run series, he's coming to you and chatting you up and saying, run. And so... What I'm trying to get across to you is that we do not need to model ourselves after Moses here. Verse 14. It says, then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. So what what happens when we say, Lord, send somebody else, please? (laughs) I don't care how nice you say it, how politely you phrase it, right? The Lord's anger is burning hot. Who was Sophie said? They said, go clean your room. She said, no, thank you. Ah, Cute, right? But you still got to go clean that room. And I don't care how nice you say it. Get about it, right? I mean, that was probably 10 years ago. She was little. But um, here we are. Now, Now look at Jesus, because what we don't want is the Lord's anger burning hot against us. John 4, 34, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Who sent Jesus? God the Father, and to finish his work. Whose work? God the Father's. Do you not say, do you, don't you say this? There are still four months and then come, four months and then comes the harvest. It's like way out there, way out there. Behold, I, Jesus, say to you, lift up your eyes and look. Look at the fields. They're already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. It's like, what are you even looking at? Look up. Check out. It's like it's all ready to be reaped. Are you hungry? Good, because the food's ready. Yes? We're gathering fruit for eternal life when we go and win people to the Lord. Does that make sense? For eternal life, fruit for eternal life. What does that mean? Somebody gets saved, saved from choosing hell and instead gets to choose heaven. They live forever. They live forever. Gathers fruit for eternal life. Proverbs 11.30 says, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. Talking about fruit. Where does fruit come from? Trees. That's right. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. He who wins souls is wise. What's the, what's the opposite of a wise man? A fool, yeah, someone like to say that. There you go, good, get it. A fool, yeah. Rock, all right, here we go. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 26. Are you ready for 1 Corinthians? Paul is speaking to, the, thank you. Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church. And we... 
as the Hesperian church get to receive these words in like manner. Isn't that right? It's not just for one set of people. It was written to them, and it was for them, and it's also for us, even though it wasn't written to us. Okay. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know? Remember, do you not say? Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Another word for obtain is win it. In it, to win it. That's right. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Okay, so there are runners in earthly races that want to get glory for themselves, right? They want to accomplish it, and I did this, and and look at me, right? If you can see me, I'm so fast. Right? They run for a perishable crown. S- someday, all these things that we care about here on earth so much are going to be just burned up and gone. But there are eternal prizes. There are things that don't perish. We run for an imperishable crown. Now, verse 26, and I want us to say this together. Say, therefore I run. Say it bigger than that. Therefore I run. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight. Say, I fight. I fight. Not as one who beats the air. Not as one who's a shadow boxer. Not as an air guitarist. You know what I'm saying? No, we get the thing done. Don't just pantomime it. Don't just think about it. Don't just intellectually assent. Oh, yeah, it would be good if some people talk to some other people about Jesus. Oh, we are called to run. Isn't that right? Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. We heard this, haven't we? Lay aside every weight, I'm trying, and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Do you know that the Lord has set a race before you? Do you know this? Did you know that the Lord prepared good works beforehand, meaning before you had a hand? He prepared these works beforehand that you may walk in them. You're supposed to get on that racetrack and run and keep on running. Run with endurance the race that is set before you. God has intentionality because he knew you were up to it. He knew that his spirit in you was going to be more than enough. Someone say more than enough. More than enough, not but, 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 what if they don't listen to me? But, 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 what if they don't believe that you sent me? But, 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 I'm slow of speech and not eloquent. No, you've got the Holy Spirit of God living inside you. Come on, come on. What can stand against you if God is for you? Nothing. Amen, Troy, get it. Let us. Run with endurance, the race that is set before us. We've got a race. We've got a race to run. 2 Thessalonians 3.1 says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run. Have you ever seen a word run? That's not what words do, right? Words don't run. But, but look at this. This is the word, the logos, the unchangeable, written, established, never returns void word of the Lord, right? That that word may run swiftly. The Greek word is trecho, trecho. It's it's about, it's loosely that, trecho. To run, and it's of persons in haste or indicating runners in a race. So if you've never seen a word run, imagine the word running. Who's the word? Say it loud like you know you're right. Jesus is the word. Could Jesus run? You know that's right. And Jesus is a certain part of this whole body. What part is Jesus of the body? The head. And we are the rest of the body. That's right. And so where are the legs? With Jesus or with us? With us. We got to go. Danny, you you pick it up when I'm putting it down. Totally. Jesus, like... The impulse, They Might Be Giants, has a song called My Man. All right? And I think that's the Lord just singing over us in that way. No one knows They Might Be Giants but me. That's all right. 
My man, muscles from head to foot, completely coated in in uninterrupted skin. My man, signals connect the legs to follow orders coming down from headquarters. Picture it. You get the signal from the command center to the leg, and all of a sudden the leg starts going. Trejo, to run. Metaphorically, this I love this part, of doctrine rapidly propagated. Oh, you know you like that phrase. Of doctrine rapidly propagated. To propagate something means what? Spread. To spread it. It's catching, right? Rapidly propagated means like wildfire it's spreading. This is trejo. This is that word to run, the Greek word. Of doctrine rapidly propagated, racing runners, exerting energy, striving hard. It means to spend one's strength to attain something. Oh, I like that. To spend one's strength to attain something. It's not just busy work. I'm not a fan of that. It accomplishes something or it's not getting done, right? Ain't, no, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got it means to incur extreme peril, which it requires the exertion of all of one's effort to overcome. This is a good word, to run, right? All of one's effort to overcome. I believe that it will require all of our effort, and until we go home to be with the Lord, to win all the prize that we're meant to win. I said all the prize, right? Dante, let me just tell you. Let's say, I don't know about the lottery. I've never won it. Anyway, I think you got to play to win, so maybe that's my hang-up. But all I'm saying is if you had a winning lottery ticket, right? And let's just say, pick a number. What do you want? Like Wreck-It Ralph breaks the internet, right? How, just eBay it. How much you want? Yeah, money. What's the lot of, what do they give? Horses? Two, two, three million? Somebody else who has more faith than Dante. Tell me a number when you win the lottery. Come on. How much? Laura got you beat. 300 million was the largest I heard. 300 million. You said what? Okay, Elise is, is going in California. We're going to have a billion dollar lottery. And Elise wins it. But all she gets is Dante's two, three million dollars. Do you th- is that the prize that you want to win? When you have the one winning ticket, Elise, is that, are you going to be satisfied with a billion dollar pot with coming home two, three million dollars? She'll be mad. And the Lord's anger burned. You know what I'm saying? Come on, tell me you would not be the tiniest bit upset. I know you're two, three million ahead of where you were, but it's supposed to be a billion or after taxes, half of that. Right? Still, I, I, could, I could probably live comfortably on 500 million, I think. Mm. we'll get on a budget we'll figure it out we'll figure it out it, I, the two of us together with the unity the lord commands blessing we'll we'll make it we'll make it dave ramsey i'm just kidding wherever you are if you're watching this we're on we're on the baby steps it's all right all right may the word of the lord run swiftly say swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you Anybody think Jesus is desperate to run after this high desert? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, now, like he's standing, like he's with us here today. Because he is. Anyone think Jesus is desperate to run after this high desert? Yes. Amen. He is. After allowing himself to be mocked and brutally tortured and murdered, after being falsely accused and convicted of crimes he didn't commit, the perfect, sinless God-man that came even to live here as one of us, having it, he, was all, he already made it. He was already the one. He was already in heaven with God, enjoying everything, right? Why would you come here? It gets too hot here sometimes. It gets too cold here sometimes. The earth moves and everything shakes around us sometimes for like no reason. What's it doing? I don't know. But we get up and we hold on to that TV just in case. Just in case. But Jesus came here. 
he, he endured the cross and scorned it. He hated the shame of it. But he even did that. Do you think Jesus wants to run after this high desert? Yes. I think he does too. So how does Jesus get to run on the earth now through somebody? Who is it? Oh, yeah, not just us. Come on. Closer to home. Me. That's right. Through you and through me. That's how Jesus runs now, is through you. And he runs through me. And if it's going to get done, it's only going to get done through you. And it's only going to get done through me. Otherwise, the people are going to not find their way to heaven. And they are going to end up in another place. And it's always hot there. We are still compelled by love here. Is that right? We still live sent. We are still compelled by love. And we are going to run. Amen. Love fuels us to run after the desert, doesn't it? 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19. Paul says, for though I am free from all men, I'm free. I have made myself. No one's doing this to me. I choose. I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. The more what? People. Hearts, souls. Yes. People. That I might win the more. And to the Jews, I became as a Jew. He was a Jew. You get this? But in all their practice and custom. To the Jew, I became as a Jew that I might win Jews. Those who are like me, he's saying. Those who come from my frame of reference, from my cultural context, from my hometown, from my upbringing, from, you know, when we were kids. You know what I'm saying? I become those like me. To those who are under the law, I become as those under the law that I might win, guess, those who are under the law. To those who are without law, I become as without law. Not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. I like that about Paul because you know I do that same thing. I got to feel like I just got to tell the whole story every time. Paul's telling the whole story right here. Just, to, just so you know, I'm, I'm still submitted to Christ. I'm not saying I'm lawless. All right. That I might win those who are without law. Paul wants to do it. You're laughing because you know it's true. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. Yes, right? There is a pattern developing. I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Save some. You are not, it's not your responsibility to win everybody. <laughs> and hallelujah as well, right? It's not your responsibility to win everybody. You're meant to win who God has called you to win. And you are meant to save some. And this is just an aside. This, I mean, they're all my notes. No one, you know, is asking me to say any of this except the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to tell you this. Paul is bold enough to say that I might save some. Who's doing the saving? Interesting, right? Paul didn't say that God's doing it, Will. Paul said that I'm doing it. Paul said that Paul's doing it. Kimberly says that she's doing it. <laughs> Amen. You know what? We need to develop this boldness like a lion. I want all the parents that go check out Treasure Island in a little bit, I want you to push that button on the wall and, and hear about boldness like a lion, like a brave lion, right? Bold. Pray that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That what did he say? That I might by all means save some. That I might by all means save something. That I might save some. I might save. Why? Because God lives in us. And he's using our feet to run to people. And he's using our words yielded to him to convince them that God is true and faithful and that he has the plans and he has the love that they've been missing all their life. Amen. That I might save some. I would really like us to develop a comfort with this thing in the boldness and the authority that we have been given by God. We didn't manufacture it. We didn't make it up. Say, it sure would be nice to have some authority. God said you have it. And so, I'll come heal him should be a phrase that we are not afraid to say. Should I say that again? 
I will come heal him, should not be a phrase that we are afraid to say anymore. I'll come save him even. I know you're freaking out. I get it. But it's true. It's biblical. And it's right in line with the authority structure that Jesus created. He wants you to do it. Because he's in you. Right? We're going to do it. Okay. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. For the gospel's sake. Now back to Moses. What can we learn about this interaction with the Lord? Anyone in here have a hand? Show of hands. <laughs> all right. Put your hand up about halfway. Just one. Just one is all it'll take. Halfway. Now put your right hand in. No, just kidding. I want how many fingers on that hand? Very good. Unified answer. The Lord's commanded blessing on us already. All right. It's <laughs> Jesus would say often, the kingdom of heaven is at hand now try try to get as far away from your hand as you can as like as far away as you can like extend reach try 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 no pain no gain (laughs) i beg to differ um all right how far away from you are your hand are you from your hand at this moment huh arm's length just about this far, right? I can still reach it. Yes? The kingdom of heaven is only ever this far away from you. No matter how far you go, no matter how far you reach, the kingdom of heaven at your hand is only ever this far away. You have the kingdom of heaven to minister to people right here. And you don't leave home without it. Right? This is like heaven express. Okay? Yes? All right, so back up to halfway. You got your hand here, right? But you have so much to offer people that you come in contact with and decide to have conversations with because Jesus is that good. Because Jesus is worth it and they need him. Come on. Someone who knows someone who really needs Jesus, put that hand up a little higher. Yeah, you do. All right, now put it back down halfway. This is what we're doing. Look at your fingers. We're going to go through them one by one. You're in a conversation with somebody, and you want to offer them something legitimate, don't you? You don't want to just pacify someone or placate someone, right? Just, we just got to get out of this conversation or whatever, right? Oh, well, the Lord knows. You know what? Yes, he does, and he's got a plan to fix it. And here you go. You have the ability to offer them a rock group. Listen, why don't you come with me on Wednesday nights? Or Thursday nights or whenever your favorite rock group is. Right? Come with me on on this night and meet up with us. There's a few of us. We eat together. We study the the Bible, what God's promises say. Because we're living so far under it, but we've seen ourselves coming up. Right? Tell them something. Come with me to this rock group. There's a rock group that's meeting in the lobby of our church. And it's good. It's good. They've been studying something called Pursuit. It's amazing. It's amazing amazing you have a rock group there's close relationship available here some people do not have friends listen if you need to rest your hand you can rest your hand okay i'm gonna have you put it back up you're welcome um some people you know this is true they don't have close friendships they don't have relationships they don't have anyone they would even call a friend they know people they work with people right and they care for people at home you know what i'm saying We need to get together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close relationship. How about care for one another? It's like a commodity that we have exponential. And the world is starving for it. Starving for it. How about an available network of prayer partners? Rock group people in here. Do you pray for one another? Is that true? When you go to a small group, do you have prayer time? And you say, this is actually what's happening in my life right now, and I need it to change. Would you agree with me? Um, let's link our faith together and get this thing solved in the Lord. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. 
right? Pray for one another. Lay hands on one another. It's the whole thing. Rock groups work, don't they? You have, that's one thing you have to offer people, all right? Let's move on to the second thing that you have to offer people when you're in these conversations. Man, come help me with this thing. There's a rock team, right? We have teams, ministry teams here available so that we can accomplish legitimate things that help people, right? Just like Jesus didn't come to be served but to serve, so are we. And you know there's somebody that you know that, has, that isn't here, that they should be here, and they actually have something that they can contribute and feel good about contributing. Isn't that right? Because we're not users here, right? It's not about usury. It's about destiny. Yeah? I showed my kids Back to the Future for the first time lately, and they loved it. Pfft, of course. It's only like one of the best things ever. Alan Silvestri's music is incredible, right? You know, pfft, insane. It's so good. And you remember when, when George McFly comes up to, to Lorraine's table in the cafe, and he has his little notebook, and he says, Lorraine, I'm your density. I mean, I'm your destiny. I always think about that. Listen, we have a destiny to reach people who have destinies that they don't know about. The difference is we know about it. They don't even know that they're made for a purpose and that the things that God's called them to and equipped them for are useful right now. Come with me. Come and see this project we got going on. I need your help. Would you come with me? Let's, let's go build Treasure Island together. Amen. Right? Maybe there's an HVAC guy like Vince, right, who goes and fix all the ducting work in there. Maybe, maybe there's somebody, an electrician like Randall, who goes and makes sure everything's, uh, all the lights are where they're supposed to be and safe and safe and safe, right? Maybe there's an illustrator like Elisa who goes and paints like miles of wall, you know, like she sketches it out first and then goes and paints it and then runs a crew to make sure it's all painted. Looks great, Elisa. We honor you. Awesome. Awesome. They're just taking my word for it because they haven't seen it yet, but it looks awesome. It's awesome. We love you for it. But look, like-minded people, people that you want to hang around with that have something to offer, come help me with this thing. People love to be needed that means you see something in me wow sure i'll do that i got you and then you meet up at the church where love and life and care is right and the whole thing just starts moving uh you have fun by the way also we talked about joy we make things we have fun and make things fun for others we have joy here and this heart for the harvest project is no exception we have had a lot of fun uh, number three, I don't know which finger to use for this, so let's just, we're on the third one. We're going to reclaim it for the kingdom. See, anytime, anywhere, you can give someone something. You don't have to wait for a rock team opportunity. You don't have to wait for your night of the week for rock group. If they need salvation, if they need to come into the kingdom of God and say, I trust Jesus with my life. I want to learn what that means and how to make him Lord of my life, you have salvation at hand to offer them, don't you? Every one of us can get someone saved, or dare I say, can save someone. See, the Holy Spirit working in you, you'll have the words, and they'll get saved. You have it every moment of your life. Do you want to enter into this life? Enter into this covenant and these blessings with me? Because if, if you're in the family, you get it all, right? If you're outside of the family, you don't. You don't. You got to struggle like everybody else. I don't want that for you. Do you want to come into this thing? You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be good. No one's good. But come, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. You have salvation. You've been sent to him. You can save him. Amen. Number four, your hands, you still have hands? Put them up there. Number four, you can bring them right here, right now to the church. Bring them to church. Bring them to a church service. Amen. We have uncompromised teaching of the word here. We're not going to go off in left field somewhere. Everything is going to be biblical. We're going to be founded on the word of God. Solid, building solid lives here. It's safe. We were hearing about that in the encounter service, how safe a place this is. You bring them to church. 
They're taught, refreshed, embraced. They have a belonging. Come on, this is good stuff. Number five, are you ready? Yes, pastor, we're ready. Tell us, we can't wait. Oh my goodness, we're chomping at the bit for number five. Give it to us right now, please. Okay, okay. Discipleship. Jesus said, go and make disciples everywhere. And we just happen to have about the quintessential discipleship process here called Operation Solid Lives. You may have heard us talk about it, OSL. We're in levels three and five right now. Discipling people. Training them how to follow Jesus accurately, excellently, effectively. We're doing it. We're called to do it, and we're doing it. You can invite them to discipleship. Who has invited someone to discipleship? Here. Show, like, put them up high, though, so I can really see them. A lot of hands. A lot of hands. And anyone who, you put it down, anyone who's in OSL right now, because you are going to be tested on this today, should have a hand up, right? Because that is part of the disciplines. That's part of discipleship. It's, I got this good thing. Want some? How hard is that? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Someone say, the kingdom of heaven is at my hand. All right, Philippians 3, 13. Philippians 3, 13. Brethren, fellow church members, fellow disciples, I do not count myself to have already apprehended. I've not won the whole thing yet. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward, think with your hand by your words, right? to those things which are ahead. I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14 says, I press. Press. That, that's some intentionality. That's almost some strain. That is a desperation. That's a calling. That's, I'm going to do this. I press toward the goal for the prize. Not for nothing. I don't just want to win Nothing. You're the winner. I, I couldn't care less. What's in it for me? Show me the money. Right? Where's the prize? Where's the prize? Yeah? I ate this whole Cracker Jack thing. What, where's the prize? Yeah? I put in the time. Right? Where's my millions of dollars? Where is it? I won. Where is it? Look at that empty seat next to you. I won. Where is it? Think about it. Pray over it. Ask the Lord. Give me an appointment. Divinely appointed for me to enter into that conversation and reap the harvest that is supposedly so white, so ready for picking. Yeah? I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Isn't God good? Yes. Lastly, we're going to jump back to Exodus 4.12. Remember Moses. God's telling him to do something, and Moses is answering. He has a certain answer. God says, now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say so you have no worries. You're going to have everything you need, fully resourced, full authority, full influence. You go use it in my name because I am with you, right? Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. What's our word going to be? Yes, here I am. Send me. I'm going to live sent. I'm compelled by love. I'm fueled by love for this desert, and I'm going to run after him. Is that right? Yes. Amen. Bless the Lord. What I'm going to do right now, because this is a, a moment. Normally, we gather the prayer team, and we will later. You'll have an opportunity to pray with people, but right now, Mariah is going to come. Pastor Jennifer is going to come, and they're each going to be at these tables.
You see this zero on my chest? You've been wondering this whole time what that zero is. This is the race is just starting now. And I, this is my tally. This is how many people I, since we started this race a moment ago, have touched and influenced and won by a personal conversation, right? I'm at a big goose egg. Zero. Next week when I come before you, this should be something different than zero. That's right. It should be higher than that, right? If this goes negative, we, we're going to forget it. No, look, we, this needs to be a positive number, right? And that means not zero. I need to have some conversations this week, not just you. Does that make sense? I'm in it with you. I'm a runner just like you. Everything I preach to you, I have to also live. And I'm not especially gifted to live it any better than you're gifted to live it. We're all in it about the same level. It's work. It's effort. It's determination. It's commitment. It's faithfulness. It's obedience. But the Lord says if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Do you want to eat the good of the land? You're like, ah, you can have the good of the land. Give me the bad of the land. No one's going to say that. Be willing and obedient. Right now, this is a moment where the praise team is going to come and give us some interlude music but it's a commitment time see if we have come here just to hear a devastatingly good looking pastor preach something to us then you missed it you missed it sure you got it but you missed the point i'm messing with you we come here to hear and do something about it come to jesus hear his sayings and do them is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the winds and the storms came and blew vehemently against that house, it could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right. The house didn't even shake it off. Shake it off. Hoo-hoo. It couldn't even shake it because it was built solid. Amen. Amen. Do you want your life to be solid? Do you want to be living and active in your destiny? Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet right now. We have got to decide because I cannot just, I mean, Robert, come on. Look at me and look at Robert. If I'm like, if I try to push Robert and sense and demand that he runs, nope, just nope. Okay, But if I invite Robert, if I invite Doug, if I invite you to run this race as someone that that God has called into this place to hear the message, for faith to grow in your heart, yeah, of course God's going to do it. Of course he's going to make a difference in those around me. We are inviting you to run with us. Everybody starts at zero, by the way. All right? So... It doesn't matter about what you've done or what you haven't done, how active or inactive you've been in this. Today is your day. We start today. The race starts today. And so here's what I like to do. Everybody willing to accept this call of God, because you've heard it, I've, I've only spoken the Bible today. Anyone who's heard that word, who has ears to hear, and is saying, yes. I commit to run this race, to speak my words. I want you to walk down from your seat to either one of these tables. And these ladies who have been preaching the word to you, this run word from the Lord, are going to equip you. They're going to affirm you. They're going to encourage you. Even start making your way right now. If you feel like God is calling you to actually run and speak to people, speak life into their lives, to win them, to say, man, I got stuff for you. I have an answer for you. Not only can you come to to church with me where it's so much fun and the pastor is so silly, but the word is also preached so powerfully. Not only can you come midweek when you're feeling like you're in a slump and you're struggling, 
you can come with me to rock group not only can you jump into a, a project with me and get on a team and we can accomplish something using your skills what god has put in you from the foundation of time he's made you for a noble purpose not only that but you can get saved right now you can find yourself in the kingdom of god in the kingdom of heaven fully resourced fully funded fully loved fully cherished and treasured fully everything not only that you can come to discipleship you can be a disciple like Jesus said everyone should be go out into the world and make disciples of all nations of all states of all counties of all cities of all neighborhoods of all streets of all households of all individuals yes we have so much to offer people and it's all right at hand if you want to be a part of this thing you are saying I am in I am gonna run my words are going to make a difference in people's lives and my number will not stay zero by God it will not stay zero my effectiveness on this earth for the kingdom of heaven is going to increase and it's gonna increase big time yes Lord increase our effectiveness let us see lives changed and when you come back I want you to take your own sharpie and I want you to write the new number in on that blank and I want you to wear this thing in next Sunday because you're gonna see some victories yes you're gonna see some victories that by any means I might win and save some you're gonna save some this week amen you are going to speak life into some I'm gonna see a victory yes I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord sing it again I'm gonna see a victory yes you are I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory, victory. I'm gonna see a victory. winning I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord make no mistake darkness is afraid of you because you are light and your existence means the obliteration of darkness wherever you go it's terrified of you so there's a battle going on do you know that's right but who knows that Jesus on the cross uttered three words that have forever changed everything for us it is finished it is all accomplished so as you would go in boldness speak boldly see boldly pray boldly in the mornings that God would direct you to those people who need you because they do they do they need the Jesus that lives inside you amen amen now before we dismiss there are some critical things that we have to get done but would you just tell me that you will write in the number and you will come back with your racing tag on your running tag around your necks with a godly pride that yes we did yes we have achieved victory and he will continue to move us from glory to glory to glory as by his spirit would you do it would you clap your hands in agreement amen thank you lord bless god